Mankind has asked many life-changing questions throughout the years. Where did animals come from? Why don't I just float in the air? Are there life on other planets? Is hot dog a sandwich? Today, I will answer all these questions. Yes, that's right. Hello, I'm Professor Ginko, and today we will try to answer the question of a generation. Do our variants lay eggs? So, for those of you out of the loop, in Monster Hunter, my variants are those uh, pointy-eared, elf-like people. Lore-wise, they aren't really true mammals, but instead a sense of wyverns. And it's not just M2 lore, but if you look closely, there's a little bit of difference they have with humans. They have four fingers, and they want digigrade. Digigrade means that they walk on their toes, similar to animals like cats. But there comes a time when minds look for an answer in the absence of one. How close are they to wyverns? Does it go as far to them to, perhaps, lay eggs? Since they aren't true mammals, they must lay eggs, right? Since that's part of what being a mammal is. Well, um, no actually. Although mammals are one of the animals that do give live birth, not every mammal does give live birth, as we know from the monotremes. And on top of that, from fish to reptiles to even insects, live birth isn't as uncommon as we think. It's evolved around 150 times in modern animals alone, and probably countless times in the fossil records. So, wyvarians laying eggs isn't like 100% sure, uh, we don't have any evidence though, because Capcom will not answer my emails. So we're gonna do the next best thing and assume based on in-game lore and real-life false records. Wyverns as a monster type is a diverse family of monsters spanning from standard flying wyverns to more saurian brute wyverns. Although most people assume that the Rivarians are descended from more reptilian families, it's the fang wyverns we're looking today. Now, fang wyverns are an interesting class of wyverns that blend reptilian and mammalian features. But uh, do they lay eggs? That sort of thing, however, uh, that's not really stated. If we count stories, they do have eggs. But considering that Palmutes and Fang Beasts have some eggs in those games, I don't consider that part really canon. So, back to square one, huh? Where are we? Fanged wyverns, either intentionally or not, are actually very similar to real-life animals. The closest relatives to us living mammals, in fact. The stem mammals are a strange group of mammals that aren't really reptiles, but aren't really mammals. Spitting off before reptiles became reptiles, and uh, they have a lot of traditional reptilian features. That being said, they have a lot of mammalian features too, like fur, different teeth, and evidence of milk in some cases. So, we have a probable line of where wyverians branched off. That's great. Do we have any evidence of eggs or live birth in them? To put it bluntly, um, no. We don't have any evidence of eggs or evidence of live birth of stem mammals. Part of it is that if they did lay eggs, it would be very similar to monotremes in that it's a leathery egg without a calcium layer. This would make the eggs really vulnerable drying out, and more importantly for us, softer, which in general is a very poor candidate for fossilization. On top of that, stem mammals could have adapted to live birth as well. Evolution isn't as simple as one group evolving birth and the other not. Um, evolution in general is more of like a blind idiot, rhyming or repeating across generations, coming up in general similar enough solutions to similar problems. Although it's thought that stem mammals up to early mammals laid eggs, um, the real question is kind of murky. First of all, as you mentioned, live birth has evolved multiple times, um, and it's not really an end goal too, it's just more of an advantage in that specific time. And other traits we associate with mammal reproduction have been noted in stem and early mammals. For example, Microdocodon, an early mammal in the Jurassic period, had a hyoid bone. Hyoid bone is a bone that has used to aid in swallowing, and most importantly for mammals, helps give that suckle motion for babies. Now it's not involved in eggs, but it does show that a lot of traits we associate with more advanced mammals might have actually evolved much earlier. Something to note was that these early mammals and stem mammals were pretty small actually which means that their eggs would have probably reached the size of some other animals with extremely small eggs. Uh, not impossibly sized, mind you, but at their size they were at, some small mammals would have had some extremely small eggs, on par with some hummingbird. On his blog, Paleontologist Darren Nace asked this question too. Um, the part about the early mammals, not, not our variant, that's just me. He composed the early small mammal cryptobar to monotremes nowadays Point out their eggs were pretty small at 3.5 millimeters wide. Now, hatchling size is kind of dodgy to begin with vertebrates, um, but it's not impossible to think that they gave an egg of that size. 
slightly more reasonable for some people, however, to think that giving birth to undeveloped babies like small marsupials today would have been much more easier for small mammals. It might have actually led to them giving birth. So, uh, in conclusion, what does all that mean? Well, um, for better or worse, the fossil record kind of is a bit spotty. But we really can't use that to answering this. We don't know. And it could be that a bunch of early mammal and mammal-like animals experimented with live birth and eggs. So, is that it? Will be a question for the ages? Well, not so fast. There is one more line of thinking. And that is proportions. See, proportions of humans are pretty handy for a number of things, not just grabbing and using tools. Our bodies are adapted for a number of specialized functions. Our right form giving us excellent stamina and throwing. But we're looking for another adaptation. Human babies when born are pretty large heads, all things considered. That is pretty useful for learning and something that we're very proud of. But in general, it is something that it makes birth a very complicated thing. Human pelvis, it uh, it does its best. Let's say that. However, the human pelvis has the bones being at a point to stretch and accommodate the large head of the baby. So the reason I bring this up is that the wyvarian body is very similar to human bodies. And although I really hate this trope of human-shaped um, animals that just so happen to evolve similar to humans, um, we're going to roll with that. I guess in September I will talk about how much I really despise this post. Although our variants aren't one for one in their features in general, they have some similar feats. They walk out up like us, they have four facing eyes, they have their hair restricted to their heads, and they also have mammary glands too. And um, although it's kind of weird for a reptile person to have uh, mammary glands, you compare them to stem mammals and monotremes, it's not too far-fetched. Um, seeing as they evolve similar, however, they do have a pretty wide hips, all things considered. Which, it wouldn't be too far-fetched if we consider two animals with similar body plans, converging on similar structure to not have their baby's heads. Um, get stuck on the way from childbirth. This is called convergent evolution, and convergent evolution basically was the thing I mentioned earlier. We see convergent evolution all the time in nature, uh, most notably with uh, animals that seem very similar to each other, but in fact are actually not as closely related as we would expect. The premier example is the fact that both sharks and dolphins have that signature torpedo shape, mainly because water being a liquid medium has so much resistance in it that all in all, the same design is really needed in order to go fast in that liquid medium. So that's where I place my bets. Since Capcom isn't riding me back, I have to say with a reasonable guess that Wyvarians do indeed give birth. Or um, it could be oviviviparous, which basically means that they have eggs that hatch inside, and uh, I could be wrong, you could be wrong for thinking that they laid eggs. Huh. That could be something too. Ah, in conclusion, live birth is pretty complicated when it comes to the fossil record. Until the Capcom answered the age-old question, I suppose we have to go with a very hard maybe. I just uh, want to thank you for sticking with me through this this video. Um, it <laughs> I wanted to make this video as soon as I saw that post, like right around the end of last year, stuff came up, and I am so glad I had a lot of fun making this video. Um, so yeah, 